At the end of the last episode, we were crafting our second Praetor suit, and we got a normal one, which for now we gave to our builder Sasquatch, and he's constructing at 550% speed. His base speed is 275%, and the Praetor suit doubles that, and so he's building really quickly. We need to build quickly because we need a wall in our base, at least most of it. I believe if we leave some of it open, they will all funnel into a choke point. At least that's what they were doing in the last episode when we got raided. And so we're going to attempt to build part of the base into a really defensible position so we can shred any enemy that try to attack us in a choke point. In order to help us do that, we've been researching turrets. We now have gun turrets, which are the most basic ones. And now we're researching towards the auto cannon turret. If we research that and precision rifling, we can then research the uranium slug turret, which fires uranium slugs that tear through plasteel like paper. Keep in mind, plasteel is the strongest material in this game. The end goal here is not to make our base an impenetrable fortress, but we want to be able to stall for long enough so we can crank out some more Praetor suits and possibly some more Doom Guy weapons. Once we do that, we're going to begin our journey across the world towards the landed ship, which is the final objective, and if we get there, we can take off and we can leave the planet. We walled in the base for the most part, and since we were running out of steel, I decided to use wooden walls for the right side, and so we're just going to hope they don't attack the right side, because the wooden walls are really weak. 225 HP, I mean steel walls only have 350, but wooden walls catch on fire really easily. The only part of the base that's not walled in is this choke point over here, where we have six regular turrets. We did research big boy turrets, but we're just going to try out these ones for now as i feel like these might be better in like an enclosed location the bigger turrets are better at longer range but i don't know if we need turrets to have that range the thing with turrets is after they shoot a certain amount of times you have to reload them and uranium slug turrets require uranium which we do have 190 uranium so maybe we'll build one uranium slug turret in the last episode we got invaded by mechanoids and a lot of you guys told me to disassemble them so i built this machining table and it did allow us to disassemble the mechanoids for i believe a little bit of plasteel some steel and components mcfly now has the ability to make sniper rifles for 60 steel and 8 components, which are just amazing weapons, way better even than bolts, which only have a range of 37. The first one he built was this excellent one, which has a range of 45 and really good accuracy at long and medium range, but at close range it's not so accurate. The colonists really have not been watching enough phase quickscope montages lately. We're going to have Doomguy grab the sniper rifle, and we're going to head over to, I believe, the last Kruba of the Delta Village, which is not going to take very long as we brought our usual entourage of camels and rabbits. Rabbits somehow being able to boost our caravan to superhuman speeds. All right, so Dim Guy made it to, I believe, what is the last village of the Kruba of the Delta people. We did manage to tag one already, and they're not charging it. I guess they can't see us. We tagged another one. We tagged another one. They're still not charging. And there they go. That really made them mad. They are fully charging out at us now. We're using the bolt here because we want to wound as many as we can. We don't want to kill them. And it's not like we really need extra colonists. Like we could use some extra miners or maybe some more planters. And combat colonists are always useful. If some of the prisoners we pick up are especially bad, we can always sell some of them off too. And it looks like they are deciding to run already. And ah, oh, damn, I got a bit too close. He got tagged in the shoulder. He got tagged in the foot. This guy Ant is a beast. It looks like we managed to down and not kill quite a few of them. Spider's got an infection though in his leg, which is completely fine. We can take care of that. Cadu only has two hours. And then two of them have four hours and Bopero is five hours. I think our best bet here is just to reform the caravan. Capture everyone. We just captured eight of their villagers. And yeah, onwards back to the base. It's going to take quite some time though as we're only moving at 16 tiles per day. And we're carrying eight down prisoners. Some of which I think are going to get killed unless Doomguy can work miracles here. Although it looks like he did manage to save Kadu who I think had the most blood loss out of anyone. He does end up bandaging the weaker ones first, and so no one's dead yet. Also, it looks like no one else died, so good job, Doom Guy. Holy cow. A Manhunter pack of grizzlies has entered the area, which when I look at these things, I see walking meat and coats. Since the chain gun has a tendency to completely vaporize the wildlife, we're going to send Doom Guy out with the assault rifle, and hopefully this will not just destroy their bodies. Oh yeah, it's doing work. The only drawbacks to it is the range is not amazing. But even with a poor quality one, like we're hitting good shots. This gun is going to result in us getting a lot of nice furs and meat. And in fact, we actually do have a quest to make a bunch of coats. And so this will help us complete that quest. 
A sheriff named Levia calls you from nearby. She's being chased by pirates from the guns, which by the way, earlier on this series when we had our other two bases, I would get this message occasionally and they would be getting chased by like one tribes person if it was at our other village because that village was so low wealth. And so I just ended up abandoning those villages completely. I stripped pretty much all the materials out of them. And now we're only getting events at our main base. And as you can see, these guys are not messing around. They have a ton of people. I mean, 14 elite mercenaries right there. That's a lot of firepower. I think all those elite mercenaries have marine armor, which is the best aside from Praetor suits. They also have a boss and a drifter. I don't know exactly what those are, but I think they're actually better than the elite mercenaries. We're going to fight these guys though, because I think this is the strength that we would be getting raided at. So if we can't take these guys out, then we wouldn't be able to survive a raid anyways. And Levia might be really good. So we're going to offer safety and she's pretty bad she's got a bad back and she can't really hear but she's really good at crafting actually and she's trigger happy which is actually really good for a few of our guns she's got really good shooting it's just that she really needs some replacement parts mainly a new spine and here they come these guys are not messing around Looks like they are going to funnel into our choke point though, which is great. We got C, James, and Hernan as our meat wall distraction. These guys are not really all that good and they're fairly useless around camp. We do have a bunch of people heading over here and we're just going to start warming up the BFG. Just need to get some shots off. Doom guy needs to just do work. Holy cow, that's a lot of kills. Holy cow, they're running already. The BFG just did so much work. They're trying to get out, but... Okay, wait, how do we do this here? We don't wanna fire any more BFG shots, that's for sure. We could just have a Cerno unload on them with the chain gun, and I guess McFly can as well. It might vaporize some of their gear, but okay, yeah. We killed most of them over here. Doom guy got a moodlet buff, killed someone times five, and I think that's the max you can go, because he did not get five kills there. He got, I don't know how many kills, he literally killed all these guys pretty much with two BFG shots. And there's a lot of bodies, I think, that were vaporized. I believe the second BFG shot did vaporize some bodies, or maybe we shot a third, I actually don't remember. Either way though, nobody died, which is great, and they did deliver us a lot of weapons and gear, but all their gear is gonna be tainted because they got killed while wearing it. We can recycle it though for materials, so we'll just do that. Okay, here we go. A group of mechanoids from a mechanoid hive have arrived in transport pods nearby. Holy cow, that's a lot of them. Oh my lord. What sucks about the whole thing is we literally just got attacked and we haven't even finished hauling all the armor and weapons back to base. And so I think what we'll do is have our more useless companions that can't fight just pick up the gear. RIP all this gear. And hopefully RIP all of these mechanoids. We're kind of destroying our wall here with the BFG. It's not the best. Here come the centipedes though. These guys are really slow, but they pack a powerful punch. I don't know if the best play here is to group up. Probably not. I think the best play may just be to split off. Okay, Tarsier just decided to run. He was one of our prisoners, and here we go. Oh my lord, there's going to be so many centipedes coming in. They're hitting our sandbags though, which is good. We don't want Seraph actually to get killed here. We don't want anyone to get killed over here, but definitely not Seraph. Nabs, what are you doing? Big BFG shot coming in. Nabs is just being dumb. I don't know what she's doing. She's running into them. Well, Nabs is going down. She's probably dead. Survival of the fittest right there, I guess. Big BFG shots coming in on these centipedes. Just gotta get Doom Guy in there to get a BFG. Okay, we got it. Is that all they have? I think that's it. These are the last two centipedes, I'm pretty sure. We got them. Nabs is burning alive. Her left leg is burned off and her fourth toe is burned off. She's going to die in four hours. We can't even pick her up until we extinguish the fire. She's got three hours. Can only one person do it, I think, two at a time. Only extinguish the fire. We might be able to save her actually. She's got three hours. That's a pretty good amount of time. On the downside, we lost three of our turrets, so we only have three left. And honestly, I don't know about these turrets being all that good. I think we might need to go for some of those uranium slug turrets to take on those mechanoids. Nabs is bleeding at 546%. She's going to die in one hour. Can Doom Guy save her here? 
He's not even our best medic at this point, but yeah, he actually did. 94% 10, very nice. Levia has this bad back, and I guess the problem stems from her spine. Levia is arguably one of our better combat colonists, as she does have trigger happy, and so she could be the one to use the BFG when Doom Guy's gone. Because the main thing with the BFG is the aiming time is just really high, and her being trigger happy reduces that. Her shooting skill is only 11, but I don't think it's that big of a deal because the BFG shot isn't all that accurate anyways, just as long as she's not hitting like right in front of her and she doesn't vaporize herself. But since her moving and manipulation is so bad from her bad back, we really can't rely on her that much until we fix that. And so I think we will install a bionic spine into her. And here we go. This is quite the massive operation. I feel like if there's one operation you don't want to mess up, it's this one. And it looked like it worked. She no longer does have a bad back. And so I think she'll be good to go once she does wake up. The deep drill hit another infestation. And I want to try out this new pain saw that we picked up. And that rabbit is looking like it's going to survive actually. Holy cow, that thing attacks quick. We're getting attacked by like multiple dudes at once. This is not good. Wow, that thing has like no cooldown. It just goes to town. We lost hair 12. And camel 4 is actually getting killed. But I think camels are tanky. Out of all that, Doom Guy only got bit in his left middle finger. I guess he was giving the finger <laughs> to the insects as he was sawing them and then they probably bit him he was holding the chainsaw in his right hand and his left one he was busy giving the finger that's how i'm gonna imagine doom guy chainsawing from now on holy crap we're getting attacked by a pack of manhunting elephants that is a lot of elephants all right here they come let's we'll see if olivia can get off a nice bfg shot without vaporizing her crops the good thing about the bfg versus these elephants is it doesn't vaporize their bodies unless oh that was close if she BFGs one of their bodies, then I think it would. All right, we got distance. Why is she shooting the ones in the back? Shoot the ones in the front, you dummy. And there's four left, three left, two left, one left, and they're all dead. There's so many elephants that we haven't butchered, and I think we're gonna have to expand our kitchen. We're gonna have to install another cooler in this room too, because it is not cooling down, and it's 111 outside. So we're literally gonna double cool this, and we'll hope that that will keep these things frozen so they don't spoil. The elephant meat sells for quite a bit, 122, which is pretty nice. And they're completely out of money, but they do have a mega screen television, which gives a recreation power of 160%, and apparently can pick up transmissions from ancient satellites and data cards. There's also an item stash nearby that has 330 gold, and we're completely out of gold. It's an outpost and there's 16 enemies there. Thankfully it is a Kruba of the Delta outpost and it's just a bunch of villagers. And Seraph actually has a sniper rifle. He's gonna sit pretty far back and then he's gonna try to bait them into where Doom Guy's hiding out. There we go. Holy cow, that guy got shredded. Okay, they're not going in there. There they go. Crap, he's gonna attack from all sides. Hide. They're not Charging into dust, they're just bowing him down. This is just a mess, like they're just going for our animals. A lot of them are going for our animals. One of our animals are doing it. Oh, and we actually ended up downing one of these guys, Wasp. This guy's actually really good. He's an optimist, so he gets a permanent mood effect of plus six. And he's industrious, so he works quicker. I mean, he's not really great in any skills in particular, but he is decent at shooting. We could always use some more shooters. We cut off his left middle finger. Apparently, he was giving the finger to Doom Guy as Doom Guy was giving him the finger. Wasp has a recruitment difficulty of 96%, though. So, yeah, there's pretty much no way that we're going to be able to get him. All right, so if we look at the texture now, it's going to look a bit different. And I installed this bomb mainly because it allows you to queue up a research and like for example there's another mod which adds more research and we can queue all that up so i don't have to keep going back to the research tree to do it and i wasn't sure if i want to install this new mod because it seemed like it might be a little bit overpowered as it gives us more options in terms of being able to make artificial parts i'm not sure if it allows us to make arcotech arms and stuff but i want to try it out i was wondering when we were going to get rated because we got rated on day 135 and it's been 20 days now since we've been raided. This does not look like a very large rating force, but it did say that they're using sappers to tunnel around our defenses. Oh, but then there's more down here. So it's a multi-pronged attack. Essentially, I'm just splitting up the BFG people and like Olivia might just be able to solo these guys actually. It's almost safer if she tries to solo. There's a BFG shot, two dead already. That guy's dead too. 
And that might be a triple. Oh, yep. Wait, they're already running. Yeah, we're going to leave these guys alone. And we're going to have Livia help out on this side, which Hornet needs to not be right there. Beating that out. And for some reason, I just did not send Doom Guy over here. And we had a guest, by the way. <laughs> so this guy was our guest. And the reason why he's able to be our guest is because there's a mod, which makes it so that I think guests will come by every once in a while and they'll stay in our colony. And if they like their stay, they might join us. Barrett happened to be a transport pod crash victim. And we treat him really nicely. Like I gave him this guest bed. You can increase the fee it costs for people to stay in the room, but I gave him the room for free, no fee, cause he had no money. And he still said he hated his stay, which like one thing I didn't do is you can have your colonists chat up the guests and I didn't do that. So I think that's why, but I just feel like it wasn't very nice of him to say he hated this day when we were so nice to him and so i'm not gonna say he deserved his fate but he definitely could have been a bit more appreciative let's just leave it at that we have levia over here too so we have two bfg eaters oh wait they're tunneled under the wall by the way that plasma that just shot out was our new gun that we just made a plasma rifle but yeah we're going to wind up some bfgs all right there and yeah they're running well do we chase i don't think so i don't really want to risk anyone getting wounded i think we'll just let them get away and then we'll have everyone beat the fire out. Since we finally got raided, I think it's a good time to send Doom Guy on a mission. First though, I want to test out this UAC plasma rifle that we built, which doesn't seem that good. Like it only does 11 damage and the burst shot count is five, but I don't know if that actually means anything. It's got okay range, 30 range is not terrible, but ooh, I like how fast it fires. I think the good thing about this gun is it just fires the projectiles so quickly. Oh, and we just hit the camel and yeah, the mix lost dead. I think we'll bring that along, especially because it doesn't actually slow down whoever's using it. Versus a lot of the Doom weapons do slow down whoever's using them. But yeah, we're gonna have Doom Guy and Acerno head out with our huge rabbit population, which by the way is booming. And with all these rabbits, we're moving at 82.2 tiles per day. We're gonna stop by Maidsmire, which is only gonna take us 0.2 days. But then we're gonna head up towards Agony's Thicket and we're gonna attack the guns. Holy crap, we're getting raided. Literally, as we were leaving, we we're getting raided by a pretty fat force. Although, I don't think we need Doom Guy to fend this off. And I really don't want to have to have them reform the caravan again. It's just really annoying. Yeah, we're going to let Doom Guy go. And we're going to have Levia just hold this one. We got a lot of big boys still at the base. And I think we can hold this off. It looks like they're not wanting to go into our choke point. Like, these raiders are getting smarter, I guess. You would think they'd just start blasting at the walls. But no, they're just having one dude chop away at the granite wall. Which is okay, like we got Livia over here already and she's ready to go. Alright, well here they come. Big BFG, holy crap. Another one? Oh, yep, they're running already. Oh, wait, there's two wounded. Just chill, chill, chill. No, she just killed them. They're dead, I think. Wait, they're not. They're not. Okay, everyone just back off slowly. Um, Did anyone get injured? No real injuries there. And Levia is completely fine. She's got the excellent Praetor suit. We need to give her an excellent helmet too. There's no reason why she should be using a poor Praetor suit helmet. All right, we made it to Agni Sticket, And the first thing I'm noticing is they got a few turrets set up, which we don't really want to mess with. They also have a lot of ways to power them too. Like they have two wood fire generators, two solar generators, and then they're on a battery system. In hindsight, I definitely should have brought along a BFG, but I thought it'd be fun just to try to take this out with just using the pain saw. The thing about using melee weapons is that they would suck, except for you can use shield belts, but you can only use these shield belts if you are using a melee weapon, because I guess it puts a shield around you, and then projectiles can't get in or out of the shield. We can see the turret's range, and Acerno actually outranges the turret, so I think what we'll do is we'll have Doom Guy line of sight, and we'll have a Cerno just start chipping away at this turret. Oh yeah, this is actually not going to be that hard. We got way more range than the turret. Start shooting at it. This should piss them off. Yeah, they're attacking us. Okay, good enough. And then let's start backing off with the Cerno. Oh, there goes the smoke pot belt. That did a lot of damage. Higgins is almost down. Cerno could like almost solo this, I feel like, but we're going to let Doomguy get in on the action. We're going to Doomguy back up actually just a little bit. And then here we go. Oh. They come. Oh yeah, get him. He's chainsawing him up. I'm just gonna let him go to town. This didn't work. Cerno, just kite, I guess. He's just shredding them so hard. Oh, they're running. Okay, crap. The Cerno is getting t just destroyed right now. Ah, oh, crap. This is bad. They're running, but like we're getting tagged. Doom guy, just block. Body block. I'm trying to do my body block this. I think we're good. Oh, this guy's actually almost down. Okay, he's dead. 
How's the Cerno doing? He's actually not in any immediate danger. Holy cow. That's crazy because his HP is actually really low. Um, As far as these guys, we did down Stetchy, who will be good for 14 hours. Oh, this guy's really good, it looks like. Although he's sickly. Oh, and he's depressive. That's so unfortunate because like he has burning passions in shooting and cooking, which we can both use. Someone that's good at those things, we could use an extra cook. And doing that gave Doom Guy a huge mood boost. I actually meant to bring along someone else on this mission that was not a Cerno. Ah, uh, it was Val that that's the other crazy person. He would have really got a kick out of that mission. Cerno, on the other hand, does not like seeing any of this, and now he's in pain too. His mood's going way down. Looks like we can make it in there without the turrets even attacking us, and that's assuming they did even want to attack us. They have a couple of smoke pop belts, some flak jackets, one flak jacket. Ooh, a lot of stuff in here though. Good amount of package survival meals, 17 of them. 10 fine meals. Looks like we're eating good tonight, boys. Which is actually really good because we're completely out of food. I forgot to bring enough food. Holy cow, they got a lot of batteries in here. We can deconstruct all those actually. And we can take all that stuff with us. So here's all we got from the raid. A few hundred silver in this room as well as some uranium. And they had a bunch of psychoid leaves. I think like 250 of them. Some marble blocks which we couldn't carry. And then the other room, they had some special substances. I think it was like around 20 psychite tea and wake up and some smoke leaf. And that's about it for the most part, aside from they had some medicine. One thing I realized though, is we're getting to the super end game and there's really not much more for us to accomplish in terms of like raiding stuff. The stuff we got was nice, but we don't really care about any of that stuff. And so I feel like really making a push towards just completing the game. The way I thought I was gonna end the game was the way I talked about earlier, where we'd make that epic journey all the way towards that landed ship. However, there's another way to end the game and we could build our own ship in order to leave the planet, assuming we do the proper research. And once we do build our own ship, it will start a 15 day countdown and we'll get attacked by a lot of stuff. This way we can also leave with everyone. Whereas if we did a journey across the world, since our colony is so big now, I feel like a lot of people would die in the process or it would just take forever to get over there and we'd have to make a lot of food. And I kinda wanna see if our base can hold up to the game's final attack. One thing that people have been telling me in the comment section is that you can have multiple researchers going at once. And like right now, I have two research tables down, uh, my high tech one and then the simple one. What I didn't realize though is that you can't have a researcher working on the simple research bench if you're doing advanced tech. In order for us to get Vort working on research as well, who does have 19 intellectual by the way, Fleeb's at 20, we have to build him a separate high tech research bench and a multi analyzer. And evidently, we can actually link two research benches to the same multi analyzer. So yeah, we got both the research benches up and running and we're going really quick. We got Vort researching at 453% speed as she does of a Praetor suit and Fleeb with one more intellectual is researching at 455% and here we go we research Starflight basics escaping from this planet it would be freedom at last and maybe return home but also incredibly dangerous many desperate souls went off this planet ship reactors take 15 days to charge up once you begin that process the ship reactor will emit an energy signature detectable from thousands of kilometers away raiders will flock to attack you in waves with an intensity you've never seen mechanoids are also known to be attracted to such energy signatures for their own mysterious reasons it won't start until you activate your ship's reactor we do have quite a bit of research to go though as we need all these techs for our ship and Vort's low on rest, she's trying to sleep. We don't have any time for that. We're gonna give her some wake up which gave her a full rest meter. Now she's got this buff where she's on wake up and she gets a global work speed bonus of 50% and she also gets tired less and she's more conscious, which is now making her research at almost 600% speed. Kinship of Toll contacts you with an offer of information, the location of an AI persona core, which you'll need in order to build a spaceship. Ah, okay, great, because I was wondering how we're gonna get another one of those as we sold off the ones we got from the quests earlier. Call them with your comms console if you're interested. We don't actually have a comms console. Fort wants to rest again, but we're not going to let her. We got some psychite tea that she can drink, which didn't actually improve her rest by all that much. I guess it's something you want to drink after you've been up for a little while, because it does give you a little bit of rest back, but then it also makes it so you get less tired. But like right now, her rest meter is so low, and so she's going to have to sleep soon anyways. Fleeb, on the other hand, could drink some, because his rest meter is pretty good. And yeah, I gave him a bit back too, and it boosts his recreation to full. Alright, so we built a comms console and we're going to have Seraph contact the Kinship of Toll. Request the location of an AI Persona Core, cost 1500 silver, just for the location of one. I wonder if we could ask one of our allies to send over like a trade caravan. We can, it's going to cost 15 goodwill. I don't know if we want to waste goodwill though, because we can request military aid. We should probably save that for when we do get attacked while we're trying to take off in our starship. Although, now that I think about it, it's actually not that hard to get goodwill. If we do just trade with them, we'll get the goodwill back. So yeah, let's request a trade caravan. We can actually request which one we want. I would say combat supplier. 
They could bring some good weapons. It's gonna come in a few days. They were already coming in 3.7 though, so I don't know if I needed to do that. Maybe they'll send two trade caravans. Ah, here we have our combat supplier who just has medicine, fire foam shells, and melee weapons. And they're not even good ones either. They're steel crappy ones. Is this their idea of some kind of joke? Oh, they actually do have some auto pistols, a chain shotgun, doomsday rocket launcher, which can only be used once. I would not buy that thing. They'll actually buy the guns we're not using though, so we'll sell them our guns. But the main thing is, do they have an AI Persona Core quest? They do. We're going to do that for 54 silver. I'd say that's a better deal than the 1500. And again, that was from the quest mod that we have, which may or may not be a little broken. The stash is actually pretty close and there's seven sleeping mechanoids guarding it. We were almost at item stash and we got ambushed by a group of two tribe people from the Kruba of the Delta. They will attack unless we give them over Doomguy's excellent Praetor suit helmet. Yeah, I think we'll just give it over to them. Here's your Praetor suit helmet right there. We made it to the item stash and Doom Guy is just shredding these guys with the chain gun we brought along. They have two lancers left, but it looks like they can't really pierce Doom Guy's armor. They've tagged him a few times, but it's not really mattering. And GG, we got the Persona Core. So we got all the research done to build a ship, but now we need to build a crypto sleep casket for every single colonist, which we have around 20 colonists right now. So that's above 2000 steel, 60 advanced components and regular components, and around 300 uranium. The thing is we need steel for other stuff too, like for the computer core, and we need advanced components for that too. The ship reactor takes a lot of steel, plast steel, which we don't even have 280 plast steel. A lot of advanced components on that as well. The engine and then the sensor cluster all require a bunch of advanced components and to make advanced components we need steel and plast steel both of which I mean we have 1900 steel right now but we're gonna need more the first thing we need to do to get more plast steel is I built this long-range mineral scanner as long as we're not doing any research our researchers will come over and use this actually now I think about it I should probably build another one we're gonna have both our researchers man these and look for plast steel yeah when they have nothing to do they just come over here and scan for plast steel we can have them scan for other stuff too but plast steel is the main thing we need right now and yeah evidently they can both scan for plasteel. We did have to place these outside though, which does kind of suck. Although after planting all these daylilies around the scanners, the beauty of the area actually went up to full. Philippe's at lower beauty for some reason. Maybe see sandbags. Oh yeah, the sandbags lower beauty by 10. Let's get rid of all those sandbags. Ooh, there we go. We found precious minerals, a lump of compacted plasteel. That actually didn't take too long either. I think it only took around a day or so. Then again, we do have two people running these and I think Fleeb was even on wake up earlier. On top of the Praetor suit, he was running at like 600% speed. All right, here it is on the map. It's not that far away. We can probably get down there in less than a day. It's a lump of compacted plasteel though. And so I'm assuming we're gonna have to bring a miner there with us. And we got a trade ship passing nearby. So the cool thing about that is we built this orbital trade beacon, which can be built indoors. And essentially the way this works is if you have one of these in a comms console, apparently you'll get events every once in a while that will have a trade ship passing nearby, such as this one. And I think we actually need to have Seraph man the comms console, yeah. We can call Comrade Interplanetary, the robot trader. So they have some robots to sell us, and this trader is actually a part of a mod. They have a lot of steel that they can sell us too, which actually Actually wouldn't be too bad to buy. We're getting it way below market value and they're selling us gold below market value too. I think that's why it's green. Do we want to buy any robots though? I don't think we need any robots at this point. To build a robot actually might be able to mine though, which would be good. It does cost 3.4k, but if it could operate a drill around base, that'd be really nice. Let's grab that as well as their 43 plast steel. And should we grab all the steel we can? 833 steel is actually not that expensive. Um, and then all their advanced components as well. Well, that's all of our money gone, but it's just kind of sitting around. We don't really have anything to spend it on anyways. And here's our new builder bot. Let's pop that baby inside. And here we go. It sent out the builder bot. It's maintaining stuff, which is actually really nice. There's another mod we have which allows us to maintain stuff instead of having a breakdown. In the vanilla version of RimWorld, stuff will just break down randomly. But with the maintenance mod, electronics will degrade over time. But if you keep them maintained, they won't break down. And after maintaining everything, the robot is now digging at the deep drill, which is completely awesome. It's not going to be as good as like one of our miners, although I think it's going pretty quick. So we got raided around day 156. Then we got ambushed, which was not a raid. Then we had a mass animal insanity which was not a raid it was like two ostriches went insane now we're on day 182 i think 
we're well due for a raid. And so I really do not want to send Doom Guy out for that compacted plasteel. I want to have both the BFGers in the base. Earlier, I forgot to turn off Praetor suit crafting at the UAC fabrication bench. And McFly made an extra Praetor suit out of our plasteel and advanced components, which does kind of suck as we're trying to stockpile those. But the Praetor suit did turn out to be excellent, and we gave it to Val. And I think he can probably two-man this mission with Safi. They're both decent at shooting, and Safi's a decent miner. He's got 19 mining. I will say our rabbit population is getting a bit out of control. We're now moving at 95.4 tiles per day, which partly is due to the fact that we're not carrying any heavy weapons. So one thing I've noticed is that heavier weapons actually do tend to slow you down on the map. We're doing quite the expansion project on the south side of the base, and we're adding a bunch of rooms. A couple of our colonists still don't have rooms, and it's nice to have extra rooms so that if anyone wants to stay here, they can have their own room. And this builder bot not only can mine, but it also can construct as well. Since it's a tier 3 bot, it has a mining and a construction level of 13, which is pretty decent. And the cool thing about this bot is that it does not need a sleep. It does have a rest meter, which goes down really slowly. And I believe when that goes down to zero, or it gets close, the bot will just go back to its charging station. This thing is also really fast. It moves at 7, whereas Vort has a Praetor suit, and she's still only moving at 5.26. So yeah, the bots are really cool. The only thing that does suck about them in the mod is that it takes forever to get the research done. Tier 1 bots are only 5k, but then Tier 2 bots are 10k. Tier 3 are 15k research, Tier 4 is 20k, and Tier 5 is 30k research. That is an insane amount. And so I think we'd be better off just buying a higher tier bot, even though they are pretty expensive. Like the Tier 3 one was was at 3.5k. The Tier 5 I think is like 14k or something crazy. Not that at this point we really need a Tier 5 bot, but like if I were to do another playthrough, there might be one thing I would try to farm for really early on is like a Tier 5 bot that has 20 in building and mining. That would be really good. Or there's a crafting bot that has 20 in crafting or there's one that can cook or there's a hauling bot i wonder how fast the tier 5 hauling bot is because the hauling bots move way quicker than the other bots and the hauling bot can also clean as well a entrepreneur named Kiro calls you from nearby. He's being chased by tribes people of the Kruba of the Delta. He begs for safety and offers to join your colony. He's 45 years old. If we accept, we have to fight off. Is that 150 Kruba of the Delta people? A little bit less, I think, but holy cow, that's a lot. Let's do it though. I think it'd be fun. And they're just tribes people. This dude's actually really good. He is a wimp, so he won't fight that much, which actually is not a bad trait. Originally, I thought wimp sucked, but if he does ever have a fight with anyone in the colony and they just smack him like a few times, he'll go down right away but he's not even really going to fight. I mean, he could have a social conflict that has nothing to do with his mood. That's just like if he has a disagreement with another colonist, then they'll fight each other. But as far as him ever having a mental breakdown, he's sanguine. So he gets a permanent mood effect of plus 12. What I like about this guy is he's really good at social. And we don't have a lot of people that are good at social aside from Seraph. And he's semi-intellectual. So we could build another one of these long range mineral scanners and have him man it. If they do follow him, they'll be coming in right next to our choke point, so I think they should use it. I did also do some modifications, as there was like a diagram that I saw on the wiki, where you have like this thing in the back, which like if I didn't have that, then they could shoot from back here, and some of them could have sniper rifles and stuff, which could outrange our mini turrets, but since we have this wall here, they have to go around it, and then when they pop out here, they'll just get shredded by the turrets, because all of our mini turrets have enough range. And yep, here they come. There was a lot of relationship stuff on there that I completely did not pay attention to. And so I think if we kill a lot of these guys, some of our colonists are going to be upset. Because even though these guys are at war with us, some of our colonists may have family in this army. And so we're going to try to kill as few as we can. I mean, we're just going to launch some BFGs into the middle of them. But when they run, we'll just back off. It's like some of them are trying to be sneaky, but then the majority of them are going for our main choke point. We're just going to start winding up some BFGs right now. Oh, it's laggy. Here they come. They're just getting shredded. Oh, we broke some of the wall. Doom guy's loving this. He's just getting so much mood bonus. Oh, Rhino's gonna make it through, it looks like. Rhino's hitting one of our turrets. We need some more mini turrets up here, it looks like. Oh, one is about to explode. That's not good. Didn't do much damage to us, though. There we go, they're running. Okay, let's just let him run, let him run. We'll try to knock out Mega Scarab, I guess. That's literally the guy's name, Mega Scarab. Oh no, Olivia, what are you doing? 
Do not shoot at that guy. Let's see, yeah, we broke some of our wall, but that's completely okay. We can easily repair that. It's just sandstone, not a big deal. We definitely need some more mini turrets. Like, they made it way too far. Another thing is, I think we had four turrets here, and they killed one, and it exploded when it got to, I think, 20% HP, which I believe blew up the other turrets. But one thing I found out you can do is put a wall between the turrets, and that will make it so the explosion will not hit the other turrets, and there won't be, like, a chain reaction of explosions. Also, Safi and Val made it to the spot where we scanned for the Plasteel, and there's not actually that much plasto here each node gives 32 which is quite a bit i guess and they're really tanky 8k hp on each node all in all there's 11 plasteel nodes here and if each one of them gives 32 that's around 340 350 plasteel which is quite a bit all right we got all the plasteel knocked out that actually didn't take that long because of safi's 19 mining with his praetor suit he mines at almost 400 percent speed hornet and crow now want to sleep in the same bed as each other like they're gonna have a sleepover together hornet is apparently married to orange who is not a part of our colony and he's been trying for a while. He kept getting rejected. And I think he got rejected like, I want to say like at least 10 times. And I don't know what finally made it work out for him. But we can now move them into the same room. And Gabra, Tostox, and Senra always get these buffs. Opinion, my lover, Senra. And got some Levin. And sometimes this will stack like two or three times. Which is really going to be nice. Because even right now, Hornet's in catharsis. So he recently had a mental breakdown. And he always has mental breakdowns. But apparently they really want to sleep in the same bed as each other. They get a negative five mood lit if they're not in the same bed. But yeah, since Hornet is very neurotic, he always has mental breakdowns. But now he's probably not going to have them anymore. Seems like he's finally found his happiness. And meanwhile, over here, we got the squad looking for Plasteel. This is taking quite some time, though. Like, we've just been sitting here for a few days. And, like, we do have 350 Plasteel stockpiled up. But there's no point of even starting to build this ship until we have more Plasteel. We're also going to need way more steel. Probably, like, another 2,000 okay there we go there's another lump of compacted plasteel not that far away and these guys gave us a trade request as well they want seven emg sidearms which aren't that expensive they're one advanced component and 30 steel each and they'll give us a persona core which we can sell for i think it was like 2400 which we could in turn use to buy steel or maybe even like another bot so we just found three lumps of compacted plasteel total after we get all three of these we're probably not going to need any more plasteel for the rest of the game getting more than we need for just the ship is actually going to be pretty helpful as well because we can make plasteel mini turrets out of it and they're really tanky all right so it's going to take 0.3 days to get to the first compacted plasteel 0.88 days total to get to Kamiron, and then 1.09 total to get down here to this other compacted plasteel and 1.4 days total to get all the way back home and that's assuming we don't stop at all where we're going which we are obviously going to stop and we have to mine all the plasteel which is going to take a while but the travel time is not bad Alrighty, well we made it to the first Apparently there's six sleeping mechanoids in the new zone that has plasteel in it that we just found, which the first one we just visited had nobody here. We already mined it all out, and Val did go on a mental breakdown. He's hiding in his room, although he doesn't have a room here. His mood was pretty good, like it was around 45%. It was just unlucky, I guess. Even though he is having a mental breakdown, I believe we can just leave. Yeah, we can just leave, and I don't even think he's slowing us down. Ooh, that other compacted plasteel is actually right on the way to. Then we're going to go down here to this lump of compacted plasteel. And then on the way back home, we can just hit this up. Although, yeah, there is six sleeping mechanoids here. But I think we can definitely take them. Safi and Val are both kitted up pretty hard. The reason why I even picked Val to go on these missions is because he's crazy. And I thought we'd be encountering enemies who we could kill. And that would give Val a nice mood boost. Because um, he's neurotic and he always has mental breakdowns. But if he kills people, his mood goes way up for a long time. I don't know if he gets that benefit from killing mechanoids though we'll have to find out all right we filled the trade offer got the persona core and now we're hitting up this next lump of compacted plasteel and val is still hiding in his room apparently so we're just gonna hope there's no enemies here it says threats unknown so i'm assuming that there's not because that's what it said in the other areas and yep it looks like we're all alone here aside from there is a mega sloth but that won't attack us unless we attack it and val's actually good he's snapped out of it perfect timing we can have him kill this mega sloth and we can have him skin it and that's a lot of good stuff oh, we got mad but it's too late it's dead Holy cow, that camel just got struck by lightning. The camel's not even injured that badly, just got some burns. Hair 14's right ear got burned off though, and apparently he's bleeding. Now I think about it, we're probably just gonna finish off Hair 14 because it's gonna slow us down. 
Survival of the fittest, I guess. Camel 20 is also moving at only 80%. It's gonna slow us down. And we haven't even obedience trained it yet. Well, that makes it an easy choice. And with that, we got all the Plasteel and we are out of there. And we still have this lump of compacted Plasteel to go as well, guarded by the sleeping mechanoids. And so this one should be a bit more interesting. All right, we made it to this Plasteel vein thing and we're gonna have our rabbits just kind of distract. I set an area around these lancers for them to go to, but they will not go. They're fleeing because they're too scared apparently, but hopefully these lancers will attack them. We're gonna have Val sit in front of Safi too. Holy cow, they're inaccurate. Oh, okay, they're all attacking Val, looks like. One of our hairs got killed. This is good though, they're distracting. Another hair got killed, but it's okay. <laughs> It's better the hairs than Safi or Val. This is actually really good. We're LOSing well. Let's try to LOS this one. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, back off, back off. Wait, Val is in a good spot. Yeah, we want him to tank. We don't want Safi to get hurt. He has to mine everything. Okay, perfect. We did lose a few hairs, but they knew what they signed up for. We got a psychic ship at our main base. Okay. So I will confess, I did do a save load here as what is inside this ship is fairly terrifying and whoever's nearby just gets instantly melted. However, we do have this item, the Orbital Power Beam Targeter, which we've been saving. We got it from a quest earlier and we haven't really had a good time to use it, but I think this is a perfect time to use it. So the idea here is we're going to try to hit the Orbital Beam Targeter and the BFG shots at pretty much the same time. Olivia, your BFG was so off. What are you doing, girl? Doom guy's getting melted, but... Wait, okay, stop shooting, stop shooting. We're just vaporizing the bodies. Whatever, just back off. There's only one left, I think. We vaporized a lot of the bodies and a lot of the stuff that the ship dropped, I think. But that's okay. We're alive. <laughs> Holy cow, the builder bot, dude. Wait, no, don't vaporize it. The builder bot came out here and apparently these things can get killed so I gotta be more mindful of the builder bot. Alright well we mine the rest of the plasteel and that brings us up to 1088 plasteel. Honors back to base for us, it's gonna take 0.2 days and that's the rest of the plasteel we're gonna ever need. Since we have a good amount of plasteel now, back at base I built a bionic workbench and a advanced medical station, both of which I believe are a part of a mod. In the workbench we can make a variety of parts and in the advanced medical station we can not only upgrade those parts but we can also make some advanced ones. Like we can craft our own joy wire, which is what McFly has. That makes him dumber, but he's always pretty much happy. We made a bionic foot for Doom Guy at the workbench as he is missing two of his toes on one of his feet. And we're going to upgrade it to a more advanced one. As well as we made Nabs a new leg. She's missing a leg. This stuff does cost steel, plasteel, and advanced components, which we do need in order to build the ship. But I want to make sure Doom Guy is in tip-top fighting condition before we do fight the final battle. We're also going to make an exoskeleton suit, which is actually pretty expensive. Seven advanced components for this thing, a lot of steel. But apparently we can put this on Doom Guy and it's going to make him tougher. All right, so we're operating on Doom Guy. We also made him an advanced bionic hand because his left thumb got shot off and it lowers his efficiency. By 8%. The hand was successful. We probably could have just given him an entire arm, but the arm is a bit more expensive. It would give him a bit more efficiency for a little bit better manipulation, but it's not really a big deal. Same with the foot versus the leg, and we just hit a infestation. We did have our animals out and grazing, and so they're kind of getting destroyed by this bug invasion. And we just killed a few of our animals. We did end up losing a few animals fighting this infestation, but at this point I don't really care about losing a few animals because we're pretty low on rice and stuff to feed them. And at this point we have like 50 hares, so we can definitely afford to lose some. Alrighty, well it looks like the bionic foot and the hand were successful. Let's see if the exoskeleton suit was successful. Yeah, it looks like it was. So this gives him 15% extra manipulation and a movement. Doom guy woke up and he's now moving at 7.48 movement. That is really quick. He's got 130% movement. I guess the bionic foot does help with that. It makes his foot more efficient, so that's helping. And his manipulation is now 130% because of the bionic hand in the suit, which means he's going to be more accurate. We have been doing a bit more scanning and we found a lump of compacted plastic steel, a lump of steel, 
another lump of steel, and another lump of plasteel. And they're all kind of in a nice row. We're gonna hit all of them up, and I don't know if we can pick up all the steel because it's gonna be really heavy. And we'll just see how much steel we can carry. We're definitely gonna grab all the plasteel though. And we're gonna bring along a lot of camels. All of our animals actually are coming. And this time we'll bring along Safi and Vort. They both have really good mining. We're going in a circle starting on the right, and the total journey is gonna take us 1.9 days. So two extra plasteels ended up popping up on the map. We hit those up, and I decided just to go back to base and and not go for this compacted steel way out in the middle of nowhere. And like we're completely good on plasteel now. We have 1657. But we do still need steel. Although there is an easier way to get steel I believe. First of all we got Safi digging at the deep drill. Which just is really slow. Not the most efficient way to get steel. Actually mining it out of a vein is way quicker. And so we can actually settle again. The only restriction is we can't settle right next to our base. But at this new base we just settle that. There is a bunch of compacted steel. This is definitely a way more efficient way of getting steel. I'm also seeing an enclosed area over here and I'm guessing this is some kind of ancient evil here and so we could mine some of this out and then probably send over some of our bigger guns like doom guy and Livia could get over here in like less than 0.1 days I bet or maybe we just bring one of them let's just bring doom guy I guess holy crap we're getting raided that is a lot of mechanoids right as I leave too like what is the timing of that is there even an ancient yeah, there's ancient danger here. I knew there would be because there's such a big enclosed location here. We can't open it up though because I got a micro at the other base. And in fact, I'm just going to send Doom Guy back to our main base and he might actually get over there in time just based on the fact these mechanoids have to go all the way around to get to our choke point. And these centipedes are really slow. So he might make it back in time. We also did add a little bit more layer to this maze type of thing just so that if we blow off some of the wall, it's not like it's a completely exposed wall. And here we go. And we already blew open a good portion of the wall. Okay, you need to chill, Livia. I forgot to have her not fire at will. That was definitely a mistake. And yeah, Doom Guy's here. Holy cow. Uh, yikes. He's getting tagged, but like his armor is so good. They barely hurt him. And there goes a bunch more of our wall. But that's okay. As long as we're not losing turrets. We're gonna lose a couple turrets. I guess Tony, I don't know what you're doing. That's a visitor of ours. He's not being very smart though. This turret is actually burning. We're gonna lose that uranium slug turret probably. Unless somebody repairs it. And oh yeah, it's going up quick. We're good to go with this turret. Holy cow, okay wait, I was not ready for that. Forgot how quickly Doomguy can deconstruct. So we got three centipedes in here, a lancer, and a scyther, which like, not a big deal. But they do have an orbital bombardment targeter and 19 luciferium, as well as four glitter world medicine. Ooh, okay. There's also three crypto sleep caskets here, and there could potentially be three colonists in here that are alive, which like at this point, we don't really want any more colonists because that means we have to construct more caskets for our ship. But yeah, let's just back off and let these things come to us if they want to. Oh, they're not going to. Looks like they're going to come out. Okay. Pop goes that one. I don't know why these guys are like being more ambitious with their, with their not ambitious, more aggressive, I guess the word would be. But we killed every centipede except for this last one, and I do not want to vaporize any of this stuff inside here. So we're just gonna let the centipede come out to us. We just BFG it through the wall. This thing is not aggressive at all. What is going on here? Oh crap. What is Safi and Vort doing? No, don't go this way. Holy cow, we almost killed a bombardment targeter thing. Cerno can just take it out. One damage, really? 35, there we go. 30, come on, just finish it off. There we go. Let's have a Cerno open these caskets and see what's inside. Okay, there's just two people here. No enemies. But wow, Min's so good. Wow, her traits are really good too. 14 artistic, 15 social, like holy cow, and what about Witch? Witch has 14 medical, 8 intellectual, and she's trigger happy, although she has 0 in shooting, holy cow. But man, we should have been doing more exploring earlier on. Min is a pop idol, by the way. Her childhood was aspiring pop idol, and her adulthood was a pop idol. That's definitely gotta be a pre-made character. And then yeah, beautiful, like come on, a beautiful pop idol. Like there's no way that backstory with those traits are random. And like the backstory can't be random because the childhood and the adulthood both are pop idols, so it must 
have been pre-made. With the hospitality mod, we can force recruit, and usually we don't do this because it will damage relation with other factions. But she's a part of the ancient faction, which I don't think it matters if we have good relation with them or not. So we're going to force recruit her, and we lose a bunch of relation with her faction, but we don't care about our relation with the ancients, I don't think. And so yeah, she joined us. We got a pop idol now. I literally only recruit her because she's a pop idol, and I don't want to leave a national treasure behind on this planet. Alrighty, well we built all the crypto sleep caskets we need. Whether or not this ship will fly is a whole another question that we're about to answer because we're going to start the ship. The reactor is ready to power up. The process will take about 15 days and the energy signature will be, yeah, okay. Make sure your defense is prepared. Here we go. We just got to hold out for 15 days now. Several separate groups of tribes people from the crew by the Delta have arrived. We got four colonists over here, two BFGers. We gave Witch a BFG and we actually ended up giving Witch a Arcotech arm and advanced bionic one because she is trigger happy and though she only has zero shooting, so she might be fairly inaccurate with the BFG. With the two arms we installed on her, her manipulation goes up and and so that should increase her accuracy. We don't need her to be extremely accurate with the BFG also. And as long as she's constantly firing out BFG shots, that's all that really matters. We'll have Doom got auto fire here too. We got Olivia over here with the BFG. We got Acerno with a BFG, which by the way, I bought two extra BFGs. I never showed that. Here we go. They're about to break the wall. We just warm them up both at the same time. Yeah, I think so because Acerno does have slower warm up time. So we'll hit it different times. Holy cow, they're running already. Okay, good. And over here, we have a breach, which is not good. Let's get a BFG right in the middle of all that. Not witch, though. Witch just keeps shooting that way. Pop goes the... Whatever they are. Tribesmen. There we go. We got them. Okay. Vixen has been crushed, and so is Hair90. Group of mechanoids have dropped right on top of you. Oh no. I really don't want to use the BFGs in our bedrooms. Might have to vaporize some of Amanda's sculptures. What is going to be inside? Holy cow. Okay, we're BFGing that. Yeah. Oh man. Yep, yeah, I don't even care. We're just going in it. We're losing hairs. Min, no, our pop idol is going in. And no, builder bot, run away. Doom guy has the chainsaw, so we're gonna have him go in there and chainsaw some stuff. Are they really attacking our statues? More BFG on these guys. Doom guy's going in on those centipedes. These centipedes suck in melee. I guess that's the trick to take them out. I thought that centipede was moving. <laughs> One of the bots is dispatching of it. We just completely bust open some of our bedrooms, which is unfortunate, but could have been way worse. Let's just leave it at that. Seriously, I see the pods just drop in. I know they're They're literally in the same exact spot. Some of them actually are dropping outside I was looking at it as they were passing through an angle on the camera where it looked like they were dropping inside the base But in reality, they were not. I don't know if that made sense. Okay. There's a lot of these guys coming in actually I didn't see where they rest of them dropped, but they have a pretty big force here Bigger than I thought at least. This is a weapon we used a long time ago and this one's actually masterwork. It's a really good quality one, but it melts. And Doom Guy aims with it really quickly, which is part of the problem with the gun is that it takes a while to aim. Oh no, there's a Scyther in our base and Hornet's gonna die in 0.6 hours. Seraph's got eight and Crow's got six. We can't lose Hornet though, he's been our grower guy. Looks like the Scyther is ignoring Vort, so that's good. Run Vort, get him out of there. What happened to BuilderBot? All I see left to BuilderBot is a robotic component. This whole room got destroyed. I was not even paying attention. McFly's got a pretty like low splash weapon. Hornet's dead. No, 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 no. Okay, we just vaporized some. I know we vaporized something. Hopefully it wasn't good. Okay, well Hornet's long gone. We need to save Crow. We need to tend to Seraph too. Crow's got four hours, Seraph has six. We should be good. Yeah, they should definitely survive. I think that was our only casualty Hornet. The thing about losing Hornet there is that we technically might not have lost them. As we had this item from earlier, Resurrector Mech Serum. And I believe this will resurrect Hornet. He does have a missing body part though. It's missing one of his lungs. He's alive with Resurrection Sickness. Is this World of Warcraft? Oh, yeah. Apparently his lung is fine now too. Evidently he will have Resurrection Sickness for about two days. After that he'll be able to move and stuff again. 
Holy crap, we're getting raided again. It really hasn't been that long either. Like it's been, I wanna say about a half a day. We got raided like here and we're like down here. This one's a siege also. I've never been sieged before, but I know they do work differently. I kinda wanna see what they're gonna do, but at the same time, I think we're just gonna start rocketing at them. Holy cow. That was a UAC rocket launcher. These guys keep coming in like they're going to do something, but then they back off. What are they doing? Are they charging? There we go. They're running. As we're starting to operate on Doomguy, we got raided again by a group of mechanoids. The good thing about these mechanoids, though, is they are really far away from our choke point. We just got to bandage up this wall, and they should use the choke point. Holy crap, he's building it. Is he gonna make it? Oh, he made it. That was so clutch. <sighs> we are not ready for what would happen if they would have breached that wall. That slug turret's going down. We didn't have any time to repair this wall, and so there's just sniping at our turrets. Center can get over here, actually. She should be able to shoot these guys. She can't walk over these chunks. There we go. Get them, boys. Two are breaching. Val got tagged. I think we survived here. Okay, never mind. They still have a bunch of centipedes coming. Oh no. I'm just gonna have Fleeb go for the BFG play. And leave you as well. Okay, we got it. Get out, get out. On the bright side, Doomguy's operation was successful though, and he does now have a bionic hand, which by the way, didn't I install a bionic hand on him earlier? That one mostly got smashed off. I think it was a better one too, which is quite the shame. For builder bot four, we need one robotic matrix, and for the robotic matrix, we need 20 robotic components, four advanced, and five gold, which we have all that. So we should be able to get out an improved version of builder bot three very soon. And we're gonna be using one of the robotic components that was inside builder bot three. Cause if you guys remember after his bench was destroyed, there was one robotic component remaining. So part of builder bot three will be inside builder bot four. It's basically just like we're upgrading builder bot three, you could say. And here we go. Builder bot four is up and running. Holy cow, BuilderBot 4 is quick. He's moving at 10. BuilderBot 3 was only moving at 7. But yeah, this thing is up and running and it's reinforcing our walls. I say we try to get another one of these up because we're going to need to repair walls a lot in the next 10 days. Kurubo the Delta Raid. Ooh, this is going to be good. I was going to say this is going to be a lot better than if we got attacked by like the guns, but there's a lot of these guys. There's one thing I feel like I did well in this playthrough is I didn't anger any of the high tier factions. And this guy needs to stop beating on our door. You guys going to have to use the chainsaw on him. Okay, yeah, he doesn't want any of Doom Guy's chainsaw. Oh yeah, Doom Guy's got the melee on point. It's got it on lockdown. These guys gotta run soon, right? This is gonna be it. Yeah, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Holy crap. Borden Fleep gotta get out of there. Unfortunately, Doom Guy is really far away, but we're gonna try to get him over there ASAP. As far as Borden Fleep, we're just gonna have him run. Well, Fleep can fight, but Vort has no armor, so we're gonna have to have her just run. And yeah, here we go. Okay, Vort and Fleep got out. That's good. Cerno's here. He's a little bit weak, though. Holy crap. What just happened? We're having to go BFG this room. That's going to destroy a lot of good stuff, probably. But I don't care at this point. Which is doing work on these centipedes. There's one still up. It's pretty low. And then Livia is going to BFG this one, I guess. She's going to destroy some statues, but oh well. Okay. Which has had a pretty significant injury for quite some time, I guess, because it was from the mini turret. And her head's only working at 50% efficiency, which is really bad. It affects her movement, her consciousness, like everything. It's really, really bad to have a head injury. We ended up giving her this healer mech serum, which heals all injuries. And I was trying to save this for someone who was really badly injured. But since Witch is one of our better combat colonists, as she's trigger happy and can fire the BFG really quick, I decided just to use the healer mech serum on her. Doomguy was actually outside as they were raiding us, and... We have more range than them. Maybe we can just BFG before they can get in there. Oh, that's a nice BFG. 
They're good then? Oh, yeah, that was good. We got most of them. Do we want to vaporize all those bodies, by the way? I don't feel like we do. That's a lot of mechanoid corpses that we can harvest. I wish I got tagged a few times. Doom guy, get in there, dude. What are you doing? He's just sitting there watching. Which is low. This is not good. Did we get a Doomsday rocket launcher, by the way? So there's a huge explosion on the ground. Okay, cool. Got him. Run, 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 run. Just run. How's Witch doing? She's got a lot of problems and she has another head injury another scar and it does exactly the same thing as her old one all right which took the luciferium and now she has a luciferium need it didn't heal our injuries though which i thought it was going to do it says over time it will heal so i guess it will take some time one thing i just realized that we can do is like for example kadu is pretty useless he's currently in a catatonic breakdown and he has carcinoma his sister died so he's always breaking down and overall his skills kind of suck Overall, he's pretty useless. We can start carrying the more useless people to the crypto sleep caskets, though. So apparently, it takes between 15 and 30 days to heal something on Luciferium. We're leaving in 6.6 .6 days. So, new plan we're taking out the Arcotech arm we gave her and the advanced bionic arm we gave her. And she's going right into one of the crypto sleep caskets. Toxic fallout. A distant chemical fire has released a plume of poison over this entire region. Any person or creature not under a roof will be slowly sickened by the toxic dust settling out of the atmosphere. It will last anywhere between a few days to over a season. So we're getting raided and they're tunneling under our defenses on the left. Wait, we're getting raided twice at the same time. This raid just came in, and then this raid's coming in. As far as the toxic fallout, if anyone's outside, they do start getting poisoned over time, but it does take quite a while. Unless they do have a Praetor suit helmet, which completely blocks all toxic fallout damage. It doesn't really affect these raiders, because they're not going to be here for that long. But over time, if someone's exposed to it for too long, they will start losing consciousness, and other bad stuff can happen to them. As far as this raid, though, they've already broken through this wall, and I think they're just going to start pouring through. We only have one and a half days till this ship is ready so this will be one of our last raids i think and yeah here they come okay they're really choked up okay they're already leaving actually the first raid is already done these guys are wanting to tunnel around in a different direction we just need to get doom guy in here and then we're gonna have him just hit a bfg right in the middle of all these guys right there right there oh yeah boom that wasn't enough i did it run well the ship's almost ready to go we got five hours left and we did have to add on two more ship engines because of the fact that we had three structural beams aside from that though i don't know if this thing's even gonna fly the only thing i think i did right is i put all the ship engines facing the same way but other than that like this ship does not look like it's flight worthy we'll see though in four hours i guess two hours left one hour six five four three two Reactor ready. The reactor's power-up sequence is complete. It is now ready to power a liftoff. So is this it? Just get everyone in these crypto sleep caskets. Before we do leave though, we didn't find any hares named Daisy, which if you guys don't know by now, Daisy was Doomguy's pet rabbit in his lore. This hare was named something that I think would be a good reminder for Doomguy about where he came from. And so we put the hare under and we're going to carry her to a crypto sleep casket. We brought all the bots with us as well, as they definitely earned their place on the ship. And we're going to enter the caskets with our last four people. I think this is it. Launch the ship. You've launched the ship, these colonists escaped. Everyone escaped, nobody was left behind. I had to go back into the recording to read this, but your AI will now try to guide the ship to a safe place. It may find a prosperous planet for you in this system, or it may undertake a centuries long journey to another star. It might even decide to hide under ice on an asteroid for a few thousand years, waiting for someone to build a new glitter world here. You'll find out when you wake up. Everyone is dead or gone. This story is over. Perhaps someone else will find a use for the ruins of this place. Well, GG, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This last episode took me forever to record and I cut out so much stuff. I could have probably made it two hours long, but I felt it definitely started to drag on, so I did edit out a lot of stuff. If you guys like the series and you would want to see another RimWorld series in the future, then drop a like on the video. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.